topic, which is manifesting. And um, manifesting is a superpower, which we all hold within us. And every single one of you, every single person on this planet has the power of being able to manifest and we have the power to create our own reality and we have the power to get whatever we want to get and how is that it starts off with believing it starts off with hard work perceiving persistence so we have to keep at that goal and of course positivity so a lot of times we can also over manifest there's times where you know sometimes you really want something like so badly and you're just like oh my god i really want that i really want that and you're just sending it too much energy because by wanting it that much you're blocking it as well so yes there is a balance of manifesting as well sometimes giving something way too much energy and clutching onto it and like kind of desperately seeking for it is giving it the wrong energy because at the end of the day we're all kind of we're all frequency so the frequency that you're emitting towards that goal or that that thing that we want to uh, gain in our life can also be too much vibration. So how do we find that balance and how do we find that, that inner peace from within that then truly helps us manifest things in the right manner? So yeah, back to the manifestation topic. How does it work? How do we get the superpower within us? How do we want exactly what we want we know what we want but not send it too much energy so the main thing that we must work on is ourselves and the 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 day we start to to find that peace within ourselves to find that that um that inner love and honestly i'm in my 30s now and i still seek love for myself all the time it's it's the most difficult thing to do is to love yourself it's easy to love others but to love yourself is probably the hardest and you have to love yourself because if you're not going to start with that self-love you're not going to begin with i am enough <laughs> forget anything else forget i am love forget i am fearless forget forget any of those mantras all you need to remember that you're enough none of that matters if if you know that you're enough then that's that's one of the biggest goals of manifesting that you'll be able to accomplish and be able to complete so always that having that knowing that you are enough always having that 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 love for yourself because you know you are enough and then from there once you have that self-love it then it's, it's a bit like a domino effect you're going to have the self-confidence you're going to be fearless you're going to be able to take st steps in your life and then it you can tap into that manifesting superpower because you're so confident and because you're emitting again i'll talk about frequencies because we're all energy like at the end of the day like if if even if before you go to bed sometimes like you're you know, you're in bed and you're trying to go to sleep and you're finally at that, that peace where like, okay, your thoughts are not there and you're just about falling asleep. You're not quite lucid dreaming yet, but you suddenly, when you're in that state of Zen, you literally can feel a buzz. Like you can feel like, you can feel your, your energy. You can feel your frequency because it's that real. You, it's actually a, a, an energy. We're all energy and we're all vibrations. So use that vibration to then ripple waves into being able to receive, be, give, achieve all, all, all the cycles, all the cycles. In fact, um, I actually wanted to talk about this. I had a question that I wrote down for myself the other day. By the way, journaling is really, really lovely and will really benefit you a lot in your life. And it doesn't have to be anything like rocket science or, or like a, a poem or, or something like, wow, that you read and you're like, oh, wow, this is so beautiful to read. Sometimes journaling can just be open out a book 
and just like write random words down. Some, some of us may even connect to doodling. Doodling in our journal is also something that's, um, you know, therapeutic. So I wrote down the question for myself that what am I inspired by? And I was like thinking about it for a while because I didn't want to write down some kind of a, an answer to myself. It wasn't for anyone, but I'm sharing it with you guys. I didn't want to write down like, oh, I'm inspired by someone else, like uh, another human. Of course, that uh, it's it's beautiful to to have inspiration from others as well. But when I really thought about it, I'm like, wait, what am I truly inspired by? And I was like, wow, I think I'm actually inspired by nature. Why? Because nature within nature exists cycles. And then you realize that actually like cycles are normal. Like the, you, you see it like, okay, not in Dubai because we only have two seasons here, but for example, in, in most of the world, there are four seasons and the four seasons are so symbolic in a way. Like if we start from, let's say we start from winter where it's all dead, where there's no leaves on the trees and, and there's no less of life and it just feels all dark, all dark and it's never going to end. But then suddenly the next step is, is the blooming of these little buds on when I was back in London right now. And it's honestly, it's my favorite season ever is spring because it gives you hope that, oh, wow, on that little branch, you see these little seeds like budding and you're like, wow, it gives you hope of like blo of, of blooming, that there's hope of life. And then the next season is when it all blossoms and it grows into which is summer, and then and then that that whole blossoming and that whole becoming and that being of life. And then after that, then you have autumn where where it starts to wear away and decay and and it falls and and it's okay because even when winter comes around again and it's not there again, there will be a renewal and there'll always be a cycle. There'll always be a beginning and an end. And the end doesn't mean it's the end and the beginning doesn't mean that it will last forever. So I'm, I, to me, if you ask me what I'm inspired by, it's definitely by nature because there's so much beauty in nature and it reminds you that all of this stuff is normal. The times that when you feel in that dark place or you feel like you're suffocating or, or, or times are so hard or with your exams and all the pressure that you have, like you feel like it's never going to end, but at the end of the day, like when you get past this, this incident and you're on the other side, you look back and you're like, oh, wow. Okay. I went through that to now be able to understand this. So yeah. And yeah, nature just reminds me of that animals, the cycle, everything the patterns the, the tides, the ocean tides, so beautiful, the high tides, the low tides. It's, it's all so symbolic and connected to who we are as, as beings, because we are a part of nature and we are a part of this whole cycle. So, yeah. Yeah, so why don't we open the panel out for discussions and questions, if anyone has any. Thank you so much, Sonia. I feel like everyone has something that they can take away from your words and your experiences. I think it's really common nowadays to see people wanting to step into that world of fame and fortune. So it's incredibly like in, uh, refreshing and enlightening to hear about how it's okay to take a step back and evaluate and reflect, like you said, and think about, you know, maybe your what you thought was your dream is it really your true calling or, you know, your passion. And as far as mental health and practicing a healthy lifestyle is concerned, like you said, make use of manifesting, really feel your energy I think that's also a message that all generations need to hear like from our parents to myself my peers it's so easy to get consumed in that world of social media and that portrayal of picture perfect lives and your words have helped so much in realizing you know how important it is to strike a balance between your life online and offline and how it is we can do that. So thank you. Oh, thank you. No, you know, you made a really, you, you actually struck like a chord in my head about social media because right now, like it's basically taking over and it's, it's become kind of an unhealthy toxic space even. And it's like when I was like 13 in like 2002, 2003, 
the whole thing at, at that time was like magazines and like, and there was this whole like trend going on of being like super skinny and like all these like airbrushed, like picture perfect magazines. And, and that was causing us mental health issues by, by thinking that that's what like the perfect like person looks like. And now as at 13, somebody would be looking, it's, it's even easier than that. You're just like scrolling through and half of the things are filters or face tune or, or whatever. And you're, it's affecting your mental health because you're thinking that you're not good enough because you don't look a certain way or you aren't a certain way. And, it, and it's really getting into this like toxic space like it, it was with the magazines when I was 13. And honestly, like it's, 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 really harmful and how do, how do we detox from that is is sadly we have to try and take that social media detox once in a while i know it's hard especially like for me when it's it's pretty much my job so it's very difficult but i try and just kind of take hours in the day if where i just don't look at my phone and i just put it on the side and i'm just like you know what i'm not i'm not even going to look at it now whether it's like in the evening or whether it's in the day. So I have this thing like in the morning, I don't check my phone for at least an hour after I wake up, unless like, it's like, oh, I know it's been super urgent. I've had like a million missed calls or something. <laughs> Otherwise I try and not check it. That's, I think you, all of us should keep like a time in the day where we don't check our phone and we don't check social media. I think it's really, really important. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna get this, give me one minute. I swear. Oh, you stay in Dubai, Bhumika? Sorry? I'm saying you. Yes, yes, and we're based in Dubai. Sorry about that. So no. let's get the, let's get some questions or some insights or anything anyone else wants to share in. I actually, uh, you brought up the point about, you know, your 13 year old self and on your story the other day, I saw you put up a post asking your followers if they could go back in time, what it was they could say to their 13 year old selves. And I was wondering, since you brought it up, what it is that you would say, you know, if you could go back and speak to your younger version. I think I would say to her that do everything exactly the way you did it. All the mistakes that you made, all the good times, relive them everything exactly how it was and I, it's been a really difficult journey i'm not comparing I'm, all of us have sadness and and challenges in our stories every single person and that's okay you know it's okay because a lot of people are like oh my god this is my life look at this person again social media it's ruined it look at this person that they look at the way they're living their life but no most of the time people are putting out false perspectives of what life really is and my life has been filled with a ton of challenges and and sadly from a really young age that i saw all those challenges and it could have like i always have a laugh with my brother um we always say like there could have it could have gone very wrong but the way our life you know kind of panned out and the people we became could have gone completely the other way around but i i i would literally tell her to do everything exactly the same way because had I not experienced life in that way, I may have not been the person I am today. So, yeah. <laughs> that question is actually open to, you know, everyone who's attending. Gaurav, would you like to yes. go first? Oh, I just want to say that, uh, like, I know Sonia through social media, what she was saying, but then I know there's a vibe. But uh, what I'm saying is that, and she's my fairy. So anyway, so what I'm saying is that, uh, no, when she, when she was saying that uh, there's a buzz you feel, uh, you know, when there's spiritual thing, that time I was thinking about buzz, you know, oh. your buzz. <laughs> that gave to my mind. <laughs> I know, I've put, I've put him inside right now because otherwise he'll be all over the place. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, no, no, Bhumika, I don't have any questions. Actually, I saw this on, on, on uh, Instagram. 
So since I know Sonia, I just joined. I, I was wondering whether this is about women empowerment or you know girl child education, but I didn't know that it's going to be a manifestation of spiritual talk. So but anyway, I don't have any questions right now. I'm just listening. So yeah. Uh, yeah. please have something to say at least, some insights from your life. It's so no, nice to have can... male energy with us as well, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's important to balance the yin and the yang and the, you know, masculine and feminine energy because it's not that women have only feminine energy and guys only masculine. So Absolutely. both have masculine and uh, feminine energy. So it's, uh, it's good to balance it out. And uh, what I want to say is that, yeah, so same thing. Sometimes I feel that, uh, you know, uh, certain things, if it didn't happen, my life would go like this. And because certain things happened, it went like this. But uh, I think because of those things which happened, that has made me more strong and resilient. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm the person I am today. Now, that other thing, there's this book, The Midnight Library by, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of it. So basically, that has parallel lines. So in the person uh, who's the male, female prot protagonist, so she thinks that if she would be a rock star or if she would be, you know, a uh, Arctic uh, explorer, then how would her life be? So what happens in the book, there's a magical midnight library. And in that library, she, port, she uh, goes to the portal and to those different lives. Okay. So she goes to the rock star life. She goes to the explorer life. And, uh, you know, she feels how it is, which didn't happen. But then that's what even in the book at last, she comes back to her original life and finds peace over there. So like for me example, I always wanted to, uh, maybe because of my dad, he always gave me Bill Gates example and, you know, he wanted me to be a software engineer, computer software engineer, but it didn't happen. And now I'm more into writing and the spiritual side of things, but even other things. So, yeah, so maybe in some parallel life I'm that, but then I have to find my peace in this life. That can only be uh, there to imagination. Like maybe Bhumika wanted a singer or dancer, I don't know something. So we have to find peace in the reality and you know what is that the other thing is left to imagination and it's never too late. Like right now I'm studying computer science also. I'm finishing my college because uh, I didn't finish college back in Pune. So now uh, apart from earning a living, I'm also doing my online uh, college. So it's never too late and I'm doing it in computer science. So maybe yeah, my dad's dream also will come true. I'll be a software engineer also amongst other things. So this is what I wanted to say, and uh, I think now the floor is open to you all. You all can. Thanks. Thank you so much, Gaurav. It's so interesting to hear like so many different perspectives and aspects from people of all walks of life. So thank you so much for joining in the discussion. We really appreciate it. Um, I see Naisa, your hand is up. Would you like to go ahead, unmute your mic, contribute? Uh, yeah, I had a question. Uh, what would you say is the best way for you to get back on track and break the cycle of slouching instead of, well, a social media detox included, of course, but what are the other things that you could do? To get back to, sorry, what? Can you repeat the, the, the middle part of that question, please? Like, um, get back on track, back to work. Okay. So are you talking about like after a slump of, of um, relaxation and disconnection or yeah. are you just talking, yeah? Or are you talking about like, uh, which is like on, on a vacation or when you travel and you come back or you're off from school and stuff? Yeah, uh, because I've, I've kind of been taking a break after my exams and I feel like the break is going on for way too long and I haven't completely got back on track. So the best way to kind of do that is just to schedule yourself, honestly. Scheduling scheduling can really help. And I'm really like um, old school that way. I like having like an actual diary. <laughs> I have a really cute one. I can show it to you guys. It's like really cute. It's actually like a, it's a mindful uh, diary. So even though you write down, you know, things that what you have to do on that day or on that week, it also has like a little section that gives you like insights of the week or, or top five things that you were grateful for or things like that. So I always believe in like actually scheduling is so important because I was myself, I was away for like ages. I was in India for, for some work to host like a, a show 
so I was there for about five days and then I was in, I literally came back for two nights and then I, sorry, six days I was in India, two nights and then I was in London for 12 days. So even for me, like this whole last week has been kind of like taking that vacation from my vacation. <laughs> And you know what? That's fine too. So first, first step before even the scheduling is like, don't shame yourself for not being able to get back to your routine. It's fine. Again, like it's the cycles. Nature has the cycles. Our body has the cycles. So maybe your body's and your mind is telling you that take that little bit of a break. Like you worked so hard on your exams, like let yourself rest because the oldest like quote in the book, which my dad, my granddad used to like read to us when we were like little, I say, call him dad because he was pretty much like a dad, my granddad. So he used to always say all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And trust me, my granddad was like the biggest worker in the world. Like he was ridiculously like busy and like focused and like on his work and his job and that was his life but for him to say something like that it kind of like rang a bell at such a young age but yeah once you are once you've realized of course there's a very fine line between like okay now I'm balancing and I'm relaxing and I'm you know taking this time off but then there is like that time to get back into it and yeah, I would say scheduling is super important. And uh, I hate setting like early alarms earlier as than normal, but try and wake, get yourself to wake up half an hour more like earlier than what you normally would. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to go ahead? If there's none, I actually have a question I wanted to ask. Um, so Sonia, as is evident from your Instagram feed, you never shy away from expressing yourself, be it through your words, your asanas, or like the bold colors of your wardrobe, which it's, it's so awesome, by the way, your style. Absolutely. I admire it. Um, so in a busy lifestyle, what's your best advice to go about being confident in how you express yourself and expressing your perspectives and beliefs as well. Again, I think it all kind of stems down to that loving yourself. And it's something that for me, like I totally believe like life is like art and life is poetry. Like I've always believed that, like ever since I was little, like it's just like an expression, like what, what, what am I? Like, what is Sonia? What is me? Forget Sonia, forget this like externalness what am I? I am expression. I'm here to express. I'm here to learn. I'm here to educate. I'm here to be, but I'm also here to receive. So it's always that, that, um, that kind of like balance and everything that's important. And um, expressing yourself is literally the most liberating way to live life because those who, who have that sort of way of expression in, in any way. It can be through words, it can be through painting, it can be through fashion, it can be through movement, it can be through whatever it is. So we all have that like that that thing. We just need to like learn how to connect to it and how do you connect to it and how do you find what that thing is, is truly just by spending more time with yourself, by, by having that like self-love and self-worthiness. Honestly, one thing I've learned is that life, most of life is about finding that is going back to yourself. So you think like you're on this whole journey of, of like, oh, becoming something, but actually you don't need to become anything. You have to unbecome the things. It's, it's, this is inspired by a quote of mine. You have to unbe, not my, what I wrote it. What I'm about to say is inspired by one of my favorite quotes. So unbecome all the things that you think that you should be that society that that parents that whoever is kind of programming you unknowingly or even knowingly like many many times like I was very lucky to have a family that gave me the confidence when I was little to do whatever I want so I was one of those kids basically like I was like five and we used to so I grew up in Mombasa when I was really little and most of the places we would go on Sundays, they used to have live bands. And I used to sing, I mean, I still sing. Uh, I used to sing more when I was little. And I used to be like, 
oh my God, there's a live band. Should I, not even should I go? It wasn't like I was taking permission. I was like, I'm going to go and ask them if I can sing. And like my family used to be like, yeah, go, go, you know, and like be like, please go, like give me that confidence. But like Kunal, my partner, for example, his family never gave him that confidence. Like he wanted to, it's, it's, I mean, it's funny and it's a bit ridiculous as dream, but I love the fact that he dreamt so big as when he was little, but sadly, like his parents didn't give him that back. He wanted to be like a professional cricketer. That's what he wanted to do. And he was actually really good at cricket. And it was like, it wasn't even like a childhood fantasy, but his parents were like, no, you can't do that. You have to study, you have to do that. So they had, they would like trying to program him in this way of like no education and this, that, the other, and all of these other things are important. So sometimes you have to kind of break away from that cycle of what like people are trying to mold you into and just like truly journey back to yourself because you yourself and you is all that's going to be there at the end, at the end of life, like at the beginning of life, at the end of life, like everything in between. Of course, your parents are sacred because they are literally the the most the closest to god that you can have in your life because they truly brought you into this planet so without them existing and them co uh existing you wouldn't exist like in the most literal sense so they are of course the closest but sometimes sometimes like even parents like want you to live out an idea of of what they wanted with life or their perception is on life and that's what I like a lot about like millennial parenting because now I'm at this age at like 32 where I have friends who are having kids or are planning children and stuff and a lot of them are giving the, their children that liberty to kind of like do what they do even if they're like one years old or two years old or three years old because mo a lot of times parents are putting those you know kind of perceptions onto you so break away break free from those kind of like things that like society parents etc teachers like all these people who are like trying to mold you into these kind of molds because honestly there's no one mold that everyone's going to fit in we're all unique we all have our own like abilities and, and talents and capabilities and everything and it all begins with the main step is loving yourself and having that self love and worthiness and yeah <laughs> right you spoke a lot about like programming and not having to mold yourself to others expectations and you've mentioned this on your socials before about how this applies to yoga as well people generally tend to think of yoga as just mastering these like complicated asanas where you're really flexible and I understand that perspective because I used to be in competitive yoga as well. And while practicing, my sole purpose used to be just get into that pose, push yourself to the limits. And I never really paid attention to that, to what yoga is really about, you know, getting in touch with yourself and focusing on your spirits and energy. So I just wanted to talk to you more about that and your opinions on that, you know, that entire discussion. So for me, yoga like what does the word yoga mean it means one yoga is, is oneness and what is the one it's the oneness between the connection of the mind body the soul and a lot of times like people think yoga and oh, oh it's just so like it, it frustrates me like eight out of ten people ask you oh wow you're a yoga teacher what's the hardest pose you can do like that question makes me cringe but the amount of times I get asked it is ridiculous and then the other one is like wow because I started yoga when I was 15 because of a back ache that I had at 14 like it, it was really unheard of but I have like some hip issue so I started for a very physical thing myself but then when you get into it, like, you're just like, wow, it's so much more than just a physical practice. So like the other question I get asked is, wow, if you've been doing it since you were 15, that means you're really advanced. And I'm like, hang on, like what is advanced in people's perception? Advanced is like standing on your head is like, is being an advanced yogi. No, that's not what yoga is. For me, yoga is that true peace that inner peace, that sattvic like way of life. So the, the rajas and yoga, like sattva, sat, being sattvic is like the most, the, the, the kind of most at peace you can be with yourself. Like, so back to like Nisa's question earlier, there's also uh, a kind of related, this is sorry, is what I meant. There's this, um, 
one type of rajas called the the kafas like that it's like when you're very like you're you're very like too earth you know too uh, down too like down to earth too like no, i don't want to use the word lazy because it's i don't like the word lazy because i i believe again it's it's part of the cycle to rest but there is a way where you can like just be completely disconnected like it's the opposite of sattva and then there's there's also the rajas which is like the stimulation and the the caffeinated kind of ooh, like you know so the, the the sattva is the true balance and 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 living and being and practicing yoga doesn't mean like for example it must be about well i, I was very ill actually for about five days and um, I think before that, I think it's been about like eight days. I haven't practiced actual asanas, like actual stretches. And that's okay because that isn't really what yoga is because yoga is more than just physicalities. It's, it's about that mindfulness, but also one of my teachers, Ian Finn, I, I love him. He's one of my favorites. He, he talks about mind body fullness. What does that mean? That's that that awareness of the body and that body awareness of the mind and how we like interconnect everything. Like everything is a yoga. Like me even picking up this 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 bottle right now. That's 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 yoga. Me connecting to I don't know like this this blanket right now. That's yoga. Like everything in our life can be yogic or sattvic if we want it to be it's it's more than doing something it's it's a way it's a perception and and it's a it's a lifestyle and that perception is one of of being peaceful from within and the moment you start to like have that control of inner peace and inner knowing you'll realize it's again like ripple domino effect that everything in your life you're emitting that peaceful frequency you'll be gaining it to you as well honestly we all have magic powers it's quite cool it's just like no one really tells you about it you know unless you like really start to like look in that topic and read about it but it's not like people are going around in like these corporate nine to five jobs telling you oh you know what you have a magic power like that 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 uh take canals example he's in real estate that that house that you're trying to sell you can actually sell it and you can do you can get like a big commission on it by by just you know tapping into the superpower they aren't telling you that but but you, you we all have it we can all do whatever we want to do like it's it's literally magic and it's it's crazy because there's so many times where you think like okay I want to talk about the other side of all of this failing again i hate that word failure i hate like oh i i tried and it didn't happen for me like i i gave it up you know no you didn't you did it did not happen for you the fact that you actually did that thing whatever it is you took a step at it you tried whether it worked out or not you've won already so like yes there is a there is a superpower we can get whatever we want we can do what however we want but sometimes like things are not in the bigger picture of life like there's there's our perception and then there's the source perception the big picture of life sometimes that big picture of life that thing which we thought we wanted and we were like working so hard towards doesn't happen and it doesn't work out and then we're so disheartened and we're like oh my god we failed and no you didn't fail because there's people out there who are just living this kind of clockwork life, who aren't even taking dares, who aren't even, um, uh, you know, trying to do other things. And they're actually, if if someone had to use that horrible word failure, they're in, in, in a way failing at life because they're not doing what they want. They're, they're just, again, trying to fit into those boxes, those molds. But the fact that you tried and whether it worked out or not, isn't the, the outcome of, of your, your attempt isn't what's important. It's, it's the fact that you actually gave it a shot and you actually did it and you actually went for it. You've already won by doing that. So, yeah. When you were speaking about uh, mind body awareness, it brought me back to the other day. Um, I had been given this homework from my English teacher. It was like a comprehension and there were two passages, both dealing with awareness, self-awareness and like the practice of yoga in general. And it covered, you covered everything that was essentially in there about how it's really about awareness. Even the smallest things that you can do, as long as you're aware of it, you're very conscious of what's happening. 
it, it can be considered yoga. And as for what you said about failing, I think we have a great example over here with Gaurav who, you know, he's decided that I'm not going to let life get me down over here. I want to pursue my dreams and I'm going to take up computer science. It's, it's never too late. Um, which reminds me, Gaurav, could you please um, put down the name and the author of that book you were talking about? I'd love to give it a read as, and I uh, hope- Just one thing. <laughs> He's going to go get it for us to show it. <laughs> Different. Okay, cool. I'll just quickly write the name in the chat box. Yeah, just write it. Ah. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. M A T T H A I G. H A I G. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Gaurav. I will definitely keep that in mind so as to give it a read. And I think we'll just have one more question. That's something a little interesting and to end this whole meeting on a fun note. Um, I noticed on your story, Sonia, that you really enjoy drinking coffee. So I wanted to ask you what's your go-to coffee order. And everyone in the meeting can contribute. Just go ahead, dive out your like go-to coffee order in the chat box. <laughs> so I'm a I'm a moody coffee drinker, but I normally lean towards like an almond milk latte. But sometimes I'll have either iced or hot, depends again on the weather. Like if I'm in Dubai, it'll definitely be iced. If I'm in London, it'll be a hot one. Um, but I'm also moody. Sometimes I have an iced or hot Americano. Sometimes I also do a flat white, but it's always with almond milk or oat milk, my coffee. So yeah. <laughs> Any, now everyone you else have, know your coffee order. <laughs> you have almond nuts as well, like you soak it in water and have the almond nuts. The nuts. Oh yeah, my my grandma, my nani used to. So my grandparents brought me up. That's why I speak about my nani and my nana a lot because they were literally not. bringing me up. So nani used to soak those when we were little, the the almonds, and they say it's really good for your brain. So I used to do it as a as a practice a lot for like a lot of my life. But now whenever I remember, I do it. <laughs> but not not all. Yeah, not by the way, you were. You were saying your about your grandfather, right? Your clothes. So I was reading uh, Jeff Be Bezos' book, Jeff Bezos, Bezos, or however you pronounce it, Jeff Bezos. So he was also brought up by his grandfather, and he, the grandfather, had a huge influence in his life. He used to go to the farmhouse of his grandfather, Jeff Bezos. So oh, wow. even he, had, cool. his grandfather, had a huge influence on his life. Oh, that's cool. So what's your coffee order then, Gora? Here, yeah, or blue Tokai play coffee. So I have a coffee machine, so ground coffee. And I, I'm a person who's lot into cafes, okay? So I know Dubai also has wonderful vegan and other sort of cafes. So when I come there, I'll visit. But right now in the city, so I go to cafes because I have reduced alcohol nowadays. You know, I almost don't drink. So I go to cafes and uh, I sometimes go with friends or some professional meetings. And sometimes for my me time, I go and read books. That's how oh, I've become an avid reader and uh, I have coffee. Hazelnut cappuccino. Hazelnut cappuccino. Aww. And what about you, Bumiko? What's your coffee order? Uh, I think I've taken after my mom. So she usually drinks like a French vanilla. Uh, especially, we really like the Tim Hortons French vanilla. So I'm more of, like, I like it a little more bitter. But my sister, on the other hand, she likes it more sweet. Um, so like we we have conflicting opinions about that, but usually it's a French vanilla. And overall, I really like the vibes of just sitting in a coffee shop. And like God have said, I'm an avid reader too. So just opening a book, smelling the coffee, sitting in a shop, and just yeah, you know, doing good work. There's, there's that strong, no bitter, bitter sweet symphony by the verb. So I think the bitter sweet has to be balanced again. If it's too bitter or if it's too sweet, it's not balanced. So I think again the balance comes in. Balance is very important for anything. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to Anyone else with coffee order? <laughs> now nice Sonia will have a coffee, I think. Wahiba, Sakshi. <laughs> nice, I guess. Please go ahead. Well, um, earlier it used to be cappuccinos and espressos, but uh, recently I've switched to matcha lattes. Oh, mm. that's interesting. Yummy. I've never actually had matcha. Is it good? Like, is it sweet? How it's is it? Fresh. It depends if you are able to make bitter. it properly. Yeah. Like you have, you have like to add like some kind of a sweetener for sure, like a vanilla flavor or something. 
and nice is right if they make it like really well then it tastes delicious otherwise sometimes it can be a bit like bitter you know okay i'll give it a try definitely if i find it somewhere in a cafe i'll go ahead and you know give it a go <laughs> so i think uh-huh. that brings us to the end of today's webinar session so to all attendees thank you so much for joining bringing your questions and enthusiasm with you uh, we will be sending out the certificates for attendance to your respective emails in a day or two so don't forget to check your spam and promotions tab for that and of course many many thanks to sonia for taking the time to speak with us today and sharing oh, all your advice well. oh, <laughs> we I'm wish you spoken to all of you thank you so much for having me and it was really lovely having a chat and yeah kill it in life and life is life is poetry and living is art so that if you can take back anything from this webinar it is that that just live your life to express and live each day poetically live 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 art like be be nature because you are nature so yeah <laughs> thank you so much we wish you nothing but success in each one of your future plans you. and projects uh, before we leave don't forget to follow sonia and girl up dubai on instagram i will be sending the links you can also find us on youtube and on spotify with our podcast empower her and i will quickly be sending these links so you can go ahead and check them out once again thank you all so much for joining and we hope you have thank a good day bye bye everyone thank Very you nice bye bye, bye. Bye.